Hey everybody, Brooke Ham here. What is ham radio? Let's talk about it. What is ham radio? Ham radio is amateur radio. It's a public service. To some, it's a way to communicate around the world. For others, we're just communicating down the street. Uh, it's used in emergency uh, relief efforts to coordinate uh, rescues and, and relief. And for me, it's just the ultimate hobby. You can use ham radios to communicate by using simple handhelds like your $18 bow thing. Uh, or you can point an antenna at the moon and bounce a signal off of it and uh, talk to somebody on the other side of the earth. You can use your voice. You can use dits and das as in Morse code. You can use a computer. You can use slow scan TV to communicate, sending memes back and forth. But why? Hasn't the internet and cell phone replaced all this? Yes and no. Communication is now easier than ever in most cases thanks to the internet and smartphones uh cell phones and even landlines are mainly backed by the internet to a voice a voip system voice over ip once you get to like a main hub and uh the internet uh, also relies on isps internet service providers meaning meaning that you're subscribing to the service you're paying for access uh so if that ISP ever goes down, your communication stops working. Think of AT&T, I think it was this past year, or maybe it's 2023. If that, or if that ISP decides that you've used uh, enough data this month, they throttle you your connection. They slow down how much you can download. So uh, that kind of contrasts to ham radio, which is largely peer-to-peer uh, -peer or person-to-person. -person. So there's, there are examples of some ham radio stuff that is internet linked. So, um, there are some nodes that you can connect to and talk over the internet or send emails or do whatever. But, uh, by and large, it is just peer to peer radio wave to radio wave. And this means that there isn't that infrastructure to fail. The only infrastructure that can fail is your radio, uh, your power source and your antenna. Another primary reason for amateur radio is experimentation and communication modes. And with that recent ruling from the FCC that uh, lifts the baud rate limits, we can begin exploring that more. I'm really excited for that. So still, why? Well, the answer is different for everybody. For me, like I said, it's the ultimate hobby. It encompasses many hobbies I already held, like um, electronics and software. Um, I'm a big science nerd preparedness and just all around nerdy stuff. Others like it because it encourages you to get out and hike and explore and find new places to activate from such as, uh, soda and poda summits on the air and parks on the air and, uh, activate is what we say. You make a communication between a certain number of people from these locations. Another aspect of it is some people just like to keep in touch. Uh, when I scan around the HF bands, by and large, it's just a bunch of guys rag chewing, talking about like, Hey, Jim, Bob, how you been? You know, Oh, I haven't heard from, um, dusty Joe in a while. And you know, that's just kind of, some people just like to get on there and just chit chat. So I have to be nerdy to do this. Not necessarily. That's the beauty of this hobby is you can get as close to one aspect of it as you want um you want to build your own radio and solder every last thing into place you can do that go for it you want to never look at a circuit board you can also do that just turn it on and start off they're, they're called appliance operators so you really only have to learn the concepts of the electronics you have to learn the mathematical formulas and how to plug numbers in it they're not complicated formulas so you just plug the numbers in for your exam you learn what some diagrams look like for your uh exam and that's all you need and then uh, another misconception about being nerdy is that you have to learn morse code to get licensed and this hasn't been the case since i think 2007 uh but i'm still gonna learn it 
I'm still learning it. I'm in the process of it. And I'd encourage others to do it as well. Because once you do it, your capabilities of communicating around the world go way up because you're just sending this much data up as opposed to this much data. And uh, also with that, the size of your radio can also shrink. But isn't it expensive? It's just like the nerdy thing. It's ex as expensive as you want it to be. You can go buy an $18 Baofeng or a $150 uh, True SDX HF radio, which would be like entry level HF is $150, I would say, for a True SDX. Uh, and you can be up on the air in no time. Or you can spend $6,000 if you want on a Flex SDR radio and have all the bells and whistles. I don't even know the true capabilities of those radios because they're just they're so far out of my price range i've never even looked at it the biggest place you can save your money is building your own antennas you can just do it with speaker pole and uh i don't have one on my desk right now but there's these little uh cobra head connectors where you just you just connect two two wires to it and um you can do it with just that um or you can uh, you can build your own balance or our onions uh, which I know is, if you don't know what ham radio is, you probably don't know what a balance or an onion is, but that's fine. Even when I was technician licensed, I didn't fully understand what they were. Or you can just buy equipment used. Buying used equipment is a big way to save money. I just recently bought a handheld that I'm going to do a video on. Uh, I'm very excited. I really like it. I found it used and it's the highest quality radio handheld that I own. So I'm excited for that. But it was a lot cheaper because I bought it used. Okay, so it's not not too nerdy, not too expensive. How do I get started? There's a bunch of ways to get started. I'm gonna put links in the description to all these resources. Uh, some of the the Amazon links are gonna be affiliate codes because the more revenue I generate from this this channel, the more cool stuff I can build. So affiliate links are down there for the books. Uh, but you can start just by reaching out to a local club to find uh, what's us and ham radio call an Elmer, which is basically just a mentor. And uh, I've got a link to the uh, AWRL club search page, which will help you find a club near you. Or you can simply buy a book or an audiobook on Amazon. I've done both the AWRL license manual series for my technician and my general. And I have done the uh, fast track to your ham radio license for my extra for as an audiobook. And uh, both are fantastic resources. If you're curious how an audiobook works in this format, you can check out over here. You're gonna, you can check out my uh, I'm an extra and you can too video. And I go into how that teaches things. And I really like that series. And they just put out the new ones for um, the new question pools. I would also sign up for a hamstudy.org account. Uh, again, links in the description. They have an app. I believe it's a $5 charge for the app, which I think is well worth it, but it's great for practice exams uh, and practice questions. And uh, it's just a great way to, you know, pull your phone out of your pocket when you got five minutes and, and check a couple questions. You can also just do the questions in your web browser. Or what you can do is just do all, all of these things. Uh, that would, I think, have your best chance of ingraining that knowledge in you is you do a book you do the ham study and then maybe you even reach out to an Elmer because they can help guide you along if you have some questions. So I heard you mention a technician and a general and an extra. What are those? Uh, basically those are the three tiers of license for your amateur radio license. So the lowest would be technician, which is mostly, um, VHF UHF. So that's kind of just, uh, uh, within like, you know, um, 50, 50 miles, I think is about the max you're going to get, unless you're in like some, some really, you have some really good situation set up. It's usually about 50 miles. Uh, general is one step up from technician. That is probably going to be sufficient for 90% of the people that want to get licensed. Uh, that lets you get into a lot of the HF stuff where you can bounce your radio waves off the ionosphere of the earth and travel around the earth and you know even hear an echo of yourself um if you get some good propagation going and then extra is the highest tier and that is basically just he gets some more uh 
band allocation. So more frequencies you're allowed to transmit on. Some people say that you shouldn't memorize the questions and answers. <laughs> yes and no. I tend to agree with that, but I think the bigger picture is that you study and pass the exam. Uh, however works best for you. And once you're licensed, keep continuing to learn. Try to understand why the answers are the answers, but if there's something you're really just not getting, don't sweat it. Just try to memorize the answer. And once you're licensed and have your license forever, just go ahead and try to understand these concepts better. The, the, there's a few things that I did with that that I didn't fully understand back when I was a tech and a general that I think I have a, a good grasp on now. There's so many more things that I haven't brought up and haven't had a chance to talk about because this is such an all encompassing hobby. And if you know of something, if you know, if you made it this far and you're already a ham, or if you know of something that is super interesting about ham radio, leave it in the comment. I would love to read it. So hopefully you have a better understanding of what ham radio is and how you get started in it. And hopefully you become a ham because it, it really is the ultimate hobby. This is, I have a thousand hobbies. This is by far my favorite one. So that's all I got for today. Brokeham 73.